Praise the Lord. Amen. What a joy to be here today to bring the word of God. I'm used to this place and I come to teach, so it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. As you've been told, my name is uh, Reverend Makila Patrick. I'm born again in Christ, Lord and Savior of my life. I gave my life to Jesus way back in 1986 when I was a Form 6 student at Boys High School. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a joy to keep the faith this very end. Amen. Uh, I gave my wife greetings to bring to you when she came. I hope she delivered. If she never, then I confirm. <laughs> but for her, may I deliver. Receive this from the title of Nida. She greets you. And my four children receive them. They're all away from here. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I have a son in this congregation. I hope he remember to come for the service. Free way. <laughs> <laughs> right there. You can stand up so they can swear I was a son here. That's Freddy. Freddy is one of the youth in our church. And I'm glad he's a first year here. To bless the Lord for that. So take care of my son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something in my spirit. I hope, I hope, I hope I'll manage to control the anointing. Amen. <clears throat> Something's about to ooze out of my spirit. Oh, amen. Amen. <laughs> Tonight will be noisy. It'll be a very noisy night. I hope you're ready to make noise. Oh, yes. You've got a handler for that. Amen. <laughs> because the topic we are talking about is a noise one. Oh, yes. <laughs> Give the right man because I'm very noisy. Amen. Give your hand clap because it's great. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> we are talking about the rapture. And in the interest of time, I want to mention that the rapture is a glorious event which God has promised to the church. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, church, this is the next event. No other event in between that we are looking forward to. Oh, yes. mm. Is somebody in the house? Yes. There's no other event the church is looking towards to as a major event in the end time. Apart from this event, the rapture. And the promise of this event is that uh, someday, not very far from now. Amen. Hey, someday, not very far from now. Very soon. The promise is that at the blowing of a trumpet and at the shouts of an archangel, Jesus will appear in the sky. Oh, yes. And he will take his church, both living and dead, to heaven. That is that is what I'm looking for any time from now. Yes. <clears throat> Are you going to get it right? That is the event. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And that this event is such that he will not step down on the earth. Mm -hmm. At the event of the rapture, he will not step down on the earth. Amen. The Bible recalls we shall meet him in the air. Oh, yeah. In the air. One as if you were son. Now, this term called rapture, it comes from a Latin word, mean, well, a Latin word which means which is pronounced as rapio. Rapio. It sounds more blue than 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 anything else. <laughs> <laughs> the word is rapio, <laughs> and this word means to catch up. To catch up. This word means snatch away. This word means to take out. One as for some. And it is in turn a translation of the Greek word. The Greek equivalent word is habaso. This one sounds more challenging. Habaso. Amen. And uh, this word habaso 
in Latin translation Bible or Latin translation portion of scriptures is used 13 times. 13 times. And um, it is translated to mean catch up, just as it's in Latin. Or caught away five times in the Latin translation, it is translated to mean catch up or caught away. The other eight times it is translated to forcibly seize, forcibly seize, translated also to snatch away or to take oneself by use of force on someone. That's the translation. Now from this kind of uh, translations and meanings, the use of the word Shabbaso basically implies an evacuation exercise. Let me use that word. When I talk about evacuating, what it means that you might be held hostage somewhere, and then if you belong to a government, for example, if someone has been held hostile, or hostage, sorry for that, and then the nation the person belongs to comes by force, and lifts you out of the hands of whoever has held the hostage. That is an evacuation exercise. Friends, if you are following me, what we are looking forward is not long from now, there will be an evacuation exercise upon the church. Forcibly, God will take us out of this world. In what we call the rapture. But that's the first time. An evacuation is not a negotiation exercise. It is the owner coming for his own. My God, I feel. I wish you, I wish you were feeling like me in the spirit. God, Jesus Christ, his son, is coming for his own, the church. And it's not a negotiation exercise. He's not coming to negotiate. Negotiation is over. Mm -hmm. My friend, for now, when I'm preaching about the salvation of our souls, I'm negotiating for the kingdom of God. But the rapture is not a negotiation exercise. It's a question of God coming to Abraham. Yes. Pull us out of this earth by force. Amen. Amen. So the rapture is a biblical word that comes right out of the Latin version of the Bible translation. And this same word is found in 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 17. In the New American Standard Version, the English press uses the word catch up, which was translated from the original Greek word rapio. The same phrase is used in the King James Version. If you have the King James Version, you can confirm that, that the word catch up is what is used. The New International Version uses the word catch up is what is used. But as it was sung. Let me talk about the promise to the church. Now, the concept of the rapture, brethren, was not revealed to the Old Testament prophets because this promise of the rapture is the New Testament church promise. Oh, yeah. oh yes. It is a promise to the saints of God who live. It's not a promise of the saints of God who lived before the establishment of the church. Jesus is not returning, and the bride consists of the church, the age, the church age saints. It consists of you and the ones who have slept in the Christ Jesus. The saints of the dispensation of grace. Their rapture is their portion. Oh, yeah. 
But for the saints who slept before the church dispensation time, they will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation, not at the time of the rapture of the church. You better get it right, my brothers and sisters. Amen. And if you read Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, it, it, it reveals this very clearly. So the rapture is your portion who is alive today. The rapture is the portion of those who have slept in Christ Jesus. But those of us who slept earlier, before the time of grace, before the time of Jesus Christ, will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation. But as if you were sad. Amen. The first clear mention of uh, the word rapture in scripture is found in the words of Jesus Christ. Is found in the words of Jesus, found in the words of Jesus Christ. And I beg we read in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. This portion of scriptures point to the rapture. The Bible says Jesus spoke to his disciples these comforting words and he told them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going. Listen to this church. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Are you? And take you with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way, the place where I'm going. This portion of scriptures point at the return of Christ Jesus in the rapture. But as we saw. But the most detailed revelation of the actual events that relate to the, to the rapture are given in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. He says that when Jesus appears, the Bible says the dead in Christ, the saints, the church age saints, will be resurrected and caught up first. The Bible says that those of us who are alive in Christ will be translated to meet with the Lord in the air. Oh, yeah. That's now a clear explanation of the events of the day of the rapture. But as we say, yeah. and let me look at this one, and I, I love I love the language of Paul. You know the way Paul is talking? He's talking in the current. Oh, yes. He says, and we, we who will be alive will be caught up in the air. Will be translated and shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now from the top of Paul, they lived as if Christ was coming the next minute. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And that's why at this point I want to tell somebody here, brother, sister, live as if Christ is coming the next minute. But when it comes to planning, planning as if it's going to come a thousand years ahead of you. Somebody in the house. In other words, go and revise all the notes for the Monday exam. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go and revise all the notes for the Monday exam. But this moment that you live, live as if it's coming any time from now. That is how we should live. When I to a son. Paul mentions the rapture again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. His famous chapter on the resurrection of the dead. He says, verse 51, 52, Behold, I tell you a mystery. <laughs> we shall not all sleep. I love that. But we shall be checked. I love that one. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet sounding. Listen to that. Church. Somebody say amen. amen. I like Paul saying, you know, this, this, the guys called Paul, they lived as if Christ was coming any time. And I repeat and say, I want to tell you that we shall not all of us sleep. And it's a fact. Some of us will sleep, others will not sleep. But he says this, if there is a mystery that is right in the church, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be checked. Oh, yeah. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last 
trumpet sound, we shall be transformed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh my God. The saints receive glorified bodies. Hallelujah. When he's pointing at the fact that we shall be changed, he's pointing the fact that we shall receive glorified bodies. Some of us sit in very bad bodies. One day, try Sunday, I was telling somebody, I was telling somebody when I was preaching in church, I was telling them, my friend, some of you are not contented with your body. And you want to admire other people's bodies. When you see a tall lady and you say, I wish I was made short. When you see somebody who says, I wish I was a heart and flesh on ourselves. And I told them this thing, my friend. Some of you, if they gave you their bodies just for one day, you cannot manage it. You return it back to them. You return that body. Why is people just suffering? This body is perishable. This body is humans. It has a pain. Some of us, they are walking with cancer. It has taken our sister Sheila. She's no more. Some of them are having high blood pressure. Don't have to admire the power of body inside people are suffering. If they get you, you will turn it back the center. You say, this is how your body. I can't manage this one here. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, Hallelujah. The saints will be glorified. We shall receive glorified bodies that will be imperishable. That will be immortal and a perfected bodies. That is why I'm looking forward for that event. At the sounding of the trumpet, I will be translated, transformed, and I wear a body that does not submit the authorities of this world. We are body for heaven. That is a God. It's not that we are just controlling ourselves. This is a different God. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? It's a fox brother. It's a fox sister. What is the son of? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 42, the Bible says, so it will be with the resurrection of the body. The body that is sown in perishable, it is raised in perishable. 43, it is sown in dishonor, it will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it will be raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it will be raised a spiritual body. I'm looking for that time. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. In this world, anyway, Christ told us in this world you will suffer. He told us in this world you have trouble. Some of the troubles because the kind of bodies we have. When I stress out. But I want to tell you at the resurrection. Amen. At the sounding of the trumpet. When there will be that mighty transformation of the one who slept in Christ ahead of us. When they are transformed. Their body might have shown in weakness. In other words, might have been emaciated. Cancer me kusukuma mbato mbati kuangalia. You are not the one who goes. Are we together? Umefinwa na mambo ya university hapa. Mbako umekwenda, umekwenda kabisa kwa kuangalia. Na fikia weni mama wa miaka na saba. Kwa kwa mbisikia na miaka shuna mbili. Lakini watu wa mungu. Kama inaweze kana siku ya lewe. The Papa in the course of side preachment because this day you don't know when it comes. Yeah. It can be the time I'm preaching like this and the trumpet sounds. Oh, yeah. The body might be weak today. But I want to tell the Bible we shall be raised in power. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Sown as a natural body, you raise a spiritual body. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just to summarize, this passage, passage teaches us that the shout of an archangel and the blowing of a trumpet will herald the sudden appearance of Jesus in the heavens. The dead in Christ will be resurrected and rise up to meet the Lord in the sky. Then those saints who are alive will be caught up, will be raptured, will caught up the Lord. Paul concludes this description by encouraging his readers to comfort one another with these words. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In other words, rapture is a comforting thought. Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. Rapture is comforting. It's a comforting thing. So today when I'm preaching on rapture, I am comforting you. And what a coincidence that Sheila, she called Sheila. Sheila is no more with us. What a comfort.
putting things, the close friends as part of us should be mourning and crying, our sister has died. Rapture is a comforting thing. Oh, yeah. Sheila, if she walked right with God, she has slept in God. We are looking forward at the sounding of the trumpet. Rest assured, you will be alive to go ahead of you. Are we together? She'll be the grass will give way. She rises up. And the Bible says, in case we shall be alive, we shall be translated and catch up to Sheila in the sky. Where are we going? That we may be with the Lord. Kanisa ni kakapo tolewa hapa. 
just hold my brother and my grace you are listening to mwalimu mwalimu wako hesabu na mhubiri wa injili ya Kristo kama uko hapa unisikize vizuri na kama unafanya uamuzi hata kabla sijamaliza kuhubiri kuja ukae hapa sema wacha niongojea hapa Ruling the world, controlling the world, the church, 
you and me for again, we will not be here. Oh, yes. Amen. That's why you should be encouraging.
Jews will be sealed as God servants at the beginning of the tribulation. He will protect those ones. But God's promise to the church during the tribulation is not one of protection, but one of deliverance. Are we together? And when will this deliverance take place? It's going to take place before the wrath. Jesus said, we will escape. In Luke 21, verse 36, we will escape the horror of the tribulation. We will escape the horror of the tribulation. Paul says, Jesus is coming to deliver us from the wrath of God. And the wrath of God, 1 Thessalonians 1, 10, the wrath of God on the face of God is a tribulation. The seven difficult years and the reign of the Antichrist. So God is coming to deliver us from that. Jesus will deliver us from that in the rapture. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That's why Pastor Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. He rescues us from the coming wrath. Tribulation. Right. As I move fast enough, there are several prophetic types. And I love this one. There are very many prophetic types that seem to affirm the concept of tribulation from, from the deliverance from tribulation. And I want us to look at this one. If you love the Bible, you like this part. There are several prophetic types that seem to affirm uh, the concept of deliverance from tribulation. Number one, let's take Enoch as an example in the Bible. Now, Enoch was a prophet to the Gentiles uh, who was raptured out of, you know very well, the Bible says, and Enoch, finish for me, believers of the church, and Enoch walked with God until he was no more. Amen. Yeah, until he was taken up. So if you don't believe the rapture takes place, there's a man who was raptured in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So you better believe it now. So he was a prophet of the Gentiles who was raptured out of the world before God poured out his wrath in the great flood of Noah's time. Do you know Enoch was taken alive before the wrath hit in the time of Noah? Now he said, look at the prophetic implication here. Enoch appears to be a type of the Gentile church, okay? That will be taken out of the world before God pours out his wrath again. Enoch, Enoch appears to be a type of what? The yes, Gentile yes. church that will be taken out of the world before God pours out his wrath again. If so, then Noah and his family are a type of the Jewish remnant. Yes. Are we together? Yes. And they will be protected from the tribulation. Look at that prophetic oh, yes. interpretation. You better hear that one again. Noah is a type, and this one is a type. Of the Jewish remnant, mm. a type of the one forty-four thousand mm. that will be protected during the tri tribulation. Enoch is a type of the gender charge that will be just be lifted before tribulation. The flood is a tribulation. Are we together? Yes. That's powerful. Yeah. Number two, another Old Testament symbolic type which points towards. Uh, pre-tribulation rapture is the experience of Lot yes. and his family. Lot and his family. Amen. These people were delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah before those cities were destroyed. Amen. When I look at, at Lot and the family, I look at Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yes. When the angels visited the Lord and instruct them to take off, it's the visitation of our Lord Jesus Christ to take us out of of this earth, are we together? Before the tribulation hits this earth, God's word is consistent. God's word locks into itself. You can never go wrong if you want scriptures. Hallelujah. And the Apostle Paul Peter, uh, the Apostle Peter also alludes to both of these examples in his second epistle. Look at what he says. Second Peter chapter 2, 4 to 9. Know how to rescue. He knows how to rescue the godly from trial <laughs> and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment. He knows how God knows how to do what? To rescue 
uh -huh, to rescue his only people from what? Trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment. Look at this, my friend. There is no way. What kind of God are you serving? What kind of God are you worshiping that he can allow you to serve a tribulation?
in the in the in the in the uh, in the book of what? Let me get some here. <clears throat> An interesting argument uh, about the timing of this rapture is found again in Second Thessalonians. I met actually this one here. You know, <clears throat> just to explain a little bit here, the church in Thessalonica was in Tomea. If you read that portion of scripture, it's because someone had written them a letter in the name of Paul, a fake letter, in the name of Paul, telling them that they have missed out on the gathering of the Lord. Go and read your scriptures. So people are living in despair that we have been left out. So what Paul did was to calm them down by reminding them of his teaching that the day of the Lord will not come until after the Antichrist, are we together, has been revealed. Now this one is talking about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord and the rapture are different days. The day of the Lord is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? Therefore, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ cannot be evident, cannot be revealed until, until and when the Antichrist has been revealed. And the Antichrist will be revealed when the church has been taken up. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So when the church is removed from the world, all hell will literally break loose on this earth. The rapture is not escapism. Some people believe that when we talk about the rapture, we are escaping some realities. We are consoling ourselves. It is not escapism. Let me point it out that it is eminent. It is a fact the rapture is going to happen. It will happen. It is going to happen. It is the next major biblical event to happen before the tribulation. The rapture is coming. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, Luke 17, the Bible says, like in the days of Noah, in the days of Luke, the Bible says, two will be in the field, two will be crying, two will be paid, one will be taken, another one will be left. Look at how the Bible says, two will be in the field, two women will be crying, two people will be paid, one will be taken, another one will be left. Let me point you here, the Bible is talking about the, that Jesus Christ can come any time. Let me qualify what he said. When do people go in bed? At night. So watch out, he might come at night. When do people go to the field in the daytime? Watch out, he may come in the daytime. When do women go crying in the evening? Watch out, Christ may come in the evening. So be ready in the morning. Be ready in the noon time. Be left in the evening. Be left at night. One will be taken and one will be left. Hallelujah. I remember when I was in KU many years as a student. I used to have this funny, this funny roommate of mine. This roommate where you are just forced on them, you have no choice who to stay with. Those days you are not staying outside my friend. You pick a roommate in the first year and he chooses to torture you. One day I had gone for a mission. When I come back, he has to be an exile in my own room. I told him, my friend, my friend, you are punishing me today. But if the rapture happens today, I will leave you. <laughs> two, two will be made. One will be taken. I will be left. Salvation is not transmitted. A husband can be born again and a wife cannot be born again. Let me tell you why the husband can be taken and the wife can be left in bed. Oh, yes. Oh, what else is Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, the Lord Himself will come down from heaven. I love this one. The Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise up. Look at the noise, look at the noise, look at the, 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 the cumulative noise at the, at, the, at the rapture time. Oh my God, I know you're in past history, you, you can enjoy this one a little bit, my brother. The Bible says, the Lord himself will come with a loud command, himself. Saudi Yesu Itasitika, Kapisa Mnyea Te Tangasa, Kama Saudi Yami Na Kama Mnaimi, Na Saudi Yesu Na Itapono Hallelujah! If at all thunder, if the heavens just thunder a little bit, we can hear it in Bungoma, we can hear it in Nairobi when it's thundering. What about the creator of heaven and earth with a loud 
sense with the voice of the heart angel, not just junior angel. Ah. This is not about this, this business or senior for any other angel to take care, to take over the, the, the heart angel. That is Michael. Michael. You hear the voice of Michael. The Bible says the voice of the heart angel. With the trumpet call of God. Look at the trumpet call of God himself. When that will take place, the Bible says, when that noise will take place, when that accumulation of noise will take place, my brother, my sister, if by chance, Barat Avenger, I will be teaching you in this hall. Barat I will be teaching you in this hall. Real analysis work. Real analysis work. Barat Avenger, I'm teaching you in that calculus. I'm teaching you major theory. And this voice takes place. And maybe I'm starting on the grave of Michael. On the grave of Shia. Shia will say, excuse me, sir. I want to meet with the Lord in the air. And my son. And my son. In a little bit of time, I'll be also. Jawa, Jawa, Aja. We have one more to go. Jawa, Aja. We have one more to go. Jawa, Aja. We have one more to go. We will 
I want to be born again. I don't want to be found in my own standing. I want to be found right standing. If you are there, your presence in this Friday fellowship could be God orchestrated, God organized so that you can be able to make that key decision because any time is Jesus' time. He will never, never, will never may know the exact time that the thing is coming. If you are there, you say, Pastor, pray with me. Raise up your hand. I want to pray with somebody here who wants to give his or her life to Jesus. Just show it up. You don't need to think twice. You don't need to think twice. If I go, you're not dying already. If there's somebody who wants to give his life to Christ Jesus, or her life to Christ Jesus in the house, yes, thank you for that hand there. I see it. Young man there. God bless you for that. We have a second person to join him there. Second person. Somebody else. Number me. Let's have one to a way. You can overcome all the fears and the troubles and say, yes. In this hall on 28th May 2020, just around nine, I better resolve and give my life to Jesus Christ in Kerry Hall. In the number two, second pass, raise up your hand. Is there somebody there? Uh huh. Hope the ashes have seen that hand up there. He needs to be helped there. Just get closer to that person. Just get closer there. And God bless you. God bless you. Get closer to that person there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to make the other prayer here. And this is a prayer I want to make. Are you in this place and uh, you know very well you have not walked right with God? This is the moment when I tell people we call a spade a spade, not a big spoon. We say it as it is, we call it as it is, we act as it is. If we have fallen short of the glory of the Lord, you know very well if this, the, the, the trumpet sounded today, you will not be among the number, you'll be left. For the tribulation of seven years, difficult years, where salvation is by the sword. If you are there and you are falling back, you are falling back in the faith. And you say, Pastor, just pray for me to be reconnected back to the Lord. Raise up your hand there. I'll pray with you. If there's someone who wants to reconnect, thank you for that hand. I see that hand. I see a second hand there. A third hand there. A fourth hand is there. Fifth, sixth, seventh hand is there. Father, we thank you for those hands. Father, we bless you for those people. We give you glory for your people are making a resolve. They are getting back to you. They are getting to connect back to you in a great, in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you for this wonderful works of God. Jesus, you are coming back. You are coming back. You can raise up on your feet. Those of us who are raising up your hand. Raising up your hand. Just stand up on your feet. Don't be this about you and God. You could be on your feet. Nate, why can't you go forward? I want to pray for you from here. Just go forward. As we, as we welcome you, give a hand to them. They are coming to God. This country is coming here. Brother, come. Thank you, my brother. Somebody walk the throne here. Let us shake the devil. Walk the throne. Give God an applause of praise. In the house. Be very connected with God. Wow. What a great night. What a party party. When the sound, when the trumpet just sound, you are there. You are there. Because you are.
There are things I've done. As I pray, I want you to associate yourself with what I'm praying. Say, there are things I've done that nobody may know. But they are an embarrassment. But today, I ask you, Lord, as I confess, forgive me. Forgive me. Wash me. Thank you, Lord. I now believe I am forgiven. I open my heart to welcome you into my life to be my Lord and Savior from now henceforth and forever. I will walk with you. I will love you. I will walk with you. I will testify your you in Jesus' name own mouth, I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. For accepting me again into your sheepfold. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Shut 